Tropical Storm Award is now heading towards Guam and it's intensifying almost a category 1 typhoon but for now it's a tropical storm and its current position 7.4 degrees north 148.8 degrees east its current sustained winds 65 miles 65 miles per hour sorry 990 millibars uh, as, uh, as central pressure and moving to the north approximately at 8 miles per hour that's latest at 16 hours local time on guam as well as northern mariana islands which is six hours utc on may the 21st its current wind field uh, tropical tropical storm force winds extending uh, to 50 nautical miles uh, from the north uh, northeastern quadrant, 45 nautical miles from the southeastern quadrant, 75 nautical miles from the southwestern quadrant, and 35 nautical miles from the northwestern quadrant. Which means that the Polowat Islands are being affected with tropical storm force winds right now since the system is located only at 45 kilometers to the west of Polawat and 160 kilometers to the southwest of Ulul so they probably are being affected with uh, probably tropical depression winds and gusts uh, of tropical storm force winds, high waves as well 195 kilometers to the east of Sarawal which is in Yap could be the same for Ulul uh, about the current effects uh, uh, right now on, the, in, on that island and then 800 kilometers to, to the south southeast of Guam and 845 kilometers to the south southeast of Rota on the Mariana Islands which means we have a typhoon watch in effect for Guam uh, for Rota, for Tinian and Saipan as well as a cyclone or typhoon warning in effect for Chuk which is Olul and Polawat Islands, including uh, Sarawal, which is in Yap. And well, we believe it's a 65 miles per hour sustained wind tropical storm. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center, they believe it's a little bit stronger, 70 miles per hour sustained winds. And the Japan Meteorological Agency, they believe it's a 60 miles per hour sustained winds uh, tropical storm. And about the forecast of this system, uh, it's expected to become a typhoon on the next hours and then gradually intensifying not that fast and then becoming a high-end category 2 typhoon before reaching Guam and Rota Island, possibly making landfall in Rota Island or passing between Guam and Rota as a high-end category 2 typhoon and there's a possibility that it could be a, a category 3 typhoon as well which is a major typhoon so it's not ruled out the typhoon on well on that day of course is going to be really strong so guam and rota islands they'll they'll receive direct effects of this uh, system and of course it's going to be a rough uh, middle week for those islands and the sea surface temperatures, well, 29, 30 degrees Celsius, completely warm, favorable for further intensification and maintaining a strong uh, storm of those characteristics and intensity on the next, talking about the next three, four days. So there's any kind of problems that my world's going to, uh, to face on the next days. And on this graphic you can see the possible wind extension uh, the tropical storm force winds are going to extend quite uh, big uh, at least uh, the green field of tropical storm force winds and strong tropical storm force winds and then the typhoon status uh, winds you can see them it's quite compact but on Guam's and northern Mariana Islands the typhoon uh, conditions practically are over those places so category 2 category 3 typhoon conditions are going to be over there on the next three days possibly 
and the rain it's going to be the same scenario multiple islands right now being affected by this uh, tropical storm being affected between two to four inches of rain so there's quite some gap accumulations and then for guam and northern mariana islands there's going to be between four six to eight inches depending on the locations of of the different islands over those places and of course those accumulations uh, could be life-threatening as well including the storm surge and high waves and you can see on this graphic the future intensity of this system uh, forecast about how strong it's going to be or or how weak depending on, on your perspective it's going to stall about uh, the the intensifying rate or the or the strengthening trend it's going to remain on the same level at least as a, a mid-level category one typhoon between uh, the first hours on may 22nd and then on may the 23rd when it resumes again the strengthening and becoming a major typhoon possibly by May 24th or May 25 and then the sea uh, sorry the wind shear levels are going to remain quite um, moderate moderate high on the next day or so that's why the, the tropical storm is going to stall its intensifying uh, trend but then the wind shear it's going to decrease and this is and this is the moment when the typhoon is going to reach a uh, major typhoon status and then uh, strengthening even more even more faster than 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 before so it's going to be a quite interesting storm to track on the next days the sea surface temperatures 30 29 degrees celsius and the humidity as well it's going to remain high so it's not going uh, we are not going to have uh, any kind of uh, dry air that is going to affect uh, the storm unfortunately at least for Guam and Northern Mariana Islands and you can see the floaters about uh, well the, the current structure and satellite presentation of Mawar and those floaters you can see and um, well you can see them sorry on Force 13's website so please check them out and please uh, keep updated with more uh, videos that we are going to upload here in Force 13 channel and possibly we are going live by tomorrow or in the next two days so please stay tuned that's all for today